Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for this second day of the Accountex Software Demo Days. It's wonderful to have so many of you joining us today. My name's Annie, I'm the Accountex Sales Ex Ex Executive and I'll be uh, your host this afternoon. I'd like to say a big thank you to our sponsor of the session, Abacus Financials. Um, just a few housekeeping notes, all sessions are being recorded um, and the recordings will be available on demand via the website. There is a Q&A uh, button on the toolbar. Um, the speakers are very happy to be answering any questions, so please do put your questions in that Q&A box. They'll be very happy to answer. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce the next session, which is Embracing Abacus Financial's Cloud Accounting to Solve Finance Directors' Business-Specific Problems. And I'd like to hand you over to Paul of Abacus Financials. Thanks, Paul. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you all see my screen? Asha, could you please confirm for me? Yes, please. Do. We can. Great. Well, that's the hardest part of the presentation over. So thanks very much for attending and uh, good afternoon to you. Um, joking aside, um, welcome this afternoon. Um, delighted you could all attend. Um, we're honoured that you're here. Um, we're Abacus Financials. We're a new name in the accounting world but hopefully one that will become more familiar to you over time. I started Abacus Financials with my business partner, TJ, with a clear vision to become the obvious accounting choice for Salesforce users. And we remain true to that vision today. My name's Paul Foden. I'm the co-founder and director of Abacus. Hasha and I will be presenting to you today. I lead the business team, which designs the software, and Hasha leads the development team, which builds it. So between us, we're responsible for everything you're gonna to see today. We're gonna to run through some introductions and then move on to the demo itself, because we know that's what you're here to see. Um, it's quite a complicated business scenario that we're gonna be introducing to you today. So we're gonna take a bit of time to introduce that to you. And then Hasha will explain how Abacus manages it all. And then I will talk about VAT, lovely, and the management reporting, which is much more fun. So let's get started with those introductions. I move the slide deck in the right order. So we've grown quickly since our start in 2019, with a clear focus on the UK and Ireland and large, medium and large businesses. And naturally, that's my first phone call. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, they didn't tell us to turn our phones off. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, we were launched in uh, 2019. Uh, we've had two upgrades since then, uh, since our launch on the Salesforce App Exchange in July 20. Um, so we've built greater scale and performance. And importantly, we're now fully MTD compliant, recognized by HMRC, yada, yada, with full post-Brexit VAT compliance, much more is important. Um, we have sales in Manchester and our R&D team is based in Bangalore. We're 30 people and we're growing and we offer a range of products, consultancy, and an overseas development center, if that is what you need. So what makes Abacus special? It offers a wealth of functionality out of the box that makes implementations faster and easier, allows you to focus your resources on the specific niche problems that are required for your business. And it's surprisingly affordable. The COVID crisis has underlined the superiority of the cloud as the preferred system architecture of businesses today. In 1999, Salesforce was a pioneer in the newly coined cloud computing world. And today it can rightly claim 
to be the king of the cloud. And if you're moving your IT architecture over to the cloud, then finance must be a part of that architecture and sit at the heart of it, which is why Abacus on Salesforce is such a good idea. Abacus's customers um, are a wide range of companies and it suits an awful lot of people. So yes, mid-market people, professional services companies, e-commerce, etc., but also specifically ambitious companies, those looking for digital transformation who want their accounting on the cloud and often have complex accounting needs that your standard software won't necessarily be able to address. So let me introduce you to today's demo. We've got a consulting fictitious company called Consulting Online. Consulting Online is a cloud-based healthcare company offering consultations to a range of clients through a network of 2,000 practitioners. Each month, they deliver over 50,000 consultations to a growing body of clients. They have different customer types, private clients, universities, insurers, businesses, and charities. And to make things more interesting, each of these customer types is invoiced in a slightly different way. In most instances, the practitioner is the principal, consulting online is an agent taking an admin fee. However, for universities, consulting agent is the principal and the practitioner's fees become a cost of sale. So it's a complicated business model. If we look at the payment flows, a client pays into Stripe and Stripe then takes a transaction fee, which it banks. Stripe will transfer the money and that goes into a client account, which is segregated from the regular funds. Once a month, those client funds are paid over to practitioners. But in the meantime, consultations online can also take its share of any um, bookings or bookings um, with an admin fee and that money goes into their office account. So one of the specific complexities here is managing three different bank accounts with one business transaction. When we look at consult consulting online's problems or accounting complexities, they have a need for real-time accounting data from their front-end web system. They've got complex transactions, and then they've got even more complex refunds and cancellations. They need sophisticated management information and they've started to use the one-stop shop VAT scheme initially for France and Germany, but they may expand that in due course. If we look at their complex accounting structure, then we can see um, that they start with six business events. So initially the client makes a booking, the client has to make a payment up front using Stripe. The session takes place and Stripe sends us the money and Consulting Online can take its share of the money. And finally, um, we make a payment to the practitioners each month end. So every single booking has these steps in, involved in it. If we break that down into debits and credits, what we have initially, the client is paying 48 pence. Stripe takes a fee, it's a fixed fee and then a percentage, and that might be 87p out of a total transaction of 48, 48p, uh, 48 pounds, I beg your pardon. When the session takes place, which might be a few days later, we raise an invoice on the client and we'll match that with the SA, which is a payment on account, to clear that payment on account off. The same time, we also raise two purchase invoices, one an internal purchase invoice for three pounds, which is the admin fee that Consulting Online is going to take, and another for £44.13, which is a balance of the fee, less the Stripe charge, which will be paid over to the practitioner. Stripe then, um, a few days after the transaction has been paid, pays over the money for this transaction and probably many others in a bulk transfer, um, which might happen twice a day or so. So once that money has been received, 
back by Consulting Online, Consulting Online can then take its share of the money out of the client account where it's been segregated and pay itself the three pounds, leaving the balance of 44 pounds 13 in the account to pay the practitioner at the end of the month. But again, the practitioner is likely to have done many of these kind of transactions. So they will receive a statement which might have 30, 40, 50 bookings on it. And all of those will be consolidated to a single payment. But the advantage of using these individual internal purchase invoices is that it maintains the integrity of the client account, which can then be reconciled to the penny. So that was a simple, if you like, um, straightforward transaction, which only involved, I think it's eight or nine transactions. Now let's make it more complicated because that's real life. So let's have a client dispute. The client has sent in a letter or phoned up or whatever it might be and said they want their money back. Well, what are we gonna do? First thing we do in any client dispute is we've got two questions to answer. First question, are we going to refund the client? Yes or no? If you're going to refund them, refund them quickly. That's what best practice is. And that's what we're going to do here. So to refund them, we reverse a session. We're going to refund them using Stripe. So firstly, we've got to put money into the client account that from the office account. Then we need to transfer that money to Stripe. And the Stripe will then refund the client. We then, after we've done all that, we then decide, and, and it may take a few days later, who is actually responsible for this? And if we decide it's the practitioner, then they will also incur an admin fee. So again, quite complicated. And that generates a whole suite of reversal transactions, which you'd be relieved to hear. We're not gonna walk you through in detail. But a reversal on top of the original eight or nine transactions doubles that number with a whole load of reversals. Fortunately, fortunately, um, in this instance, um, Abacus has an invoicing engine which will do all of this more or less at a push of a button. And the, um, the way that this is all managed is using the um, booking reference as an analysis code which groups all these transactions together to turn what would otherwise be a very complicated, very difficult to manage accounting transaction into a manageable process. And that is what Hasha is going to show you now, actually in the system, how all this complexity can be managed in a way that is much more straightforward. So Hasha, I'd like to pass over to you now, please. And um, if you would like to, uh, to do the demo, thank you very much. Thanks, PJ. I hope uh, uh, you can see my screen. Can you confirm? Okay. Yeah. Very uh, so welcome to Abacus. Abacus is built entirely on the Salesforce platform, but has its own unique look and feel. We hope that you will like it. We start on the homepage, which can be tailored to each individual user. We like to keep an eye on the sales performance, but these graphs could show potentially anything. Overdue invoices, large sales, whatever it is that is relevant to you. So scrolling down here, you can see that the Salesforce calendar and tasks all of it can be synchronized with the Google or Outlook. And also this particular homepage is fully customizable. We can actually put any custom components and make it, uh, you know, uh, uh, very customized for that particular user. Moving on to the software, we can see that Abacus is organized into nine menu tabs. You can spot it them at the right at the, uh, at the entry itself. The doing tabs are sales, purchases, and bank. This is where we raise and pay invoices reconcile the bank and process the daily transactions. If I can take you through sales as the menu tab, we can find various different functionalities of sales, customers, products, special prices, sales order, pro forma, invoices, credits, and then uh, POA is the advanced payment. It is a sales payment and account. Then we have got sales payments, refunds, and then sales failures as well. That's the payment failure. If I can just take you through one of the customer accounts. So this is how customer accounts look like. We can add many fields to this. This is, a, this is having all data about the customers or purchase, I mean, or the vendors, either way we can use them. 
and also we can see all the transactions which are done by a particular customer at the one click of a button so this is an easy way to find all the accounting transaction of a customer next i'll take you through the products layout so this is how products look like we can configure infinite number of products here each field that we add into the product makes it highly a customizable environment also we can configure some of the tax information related to the products then we have got another special functionality which is called special prices here we configure prices against each particular account and product so if you are invoicing the same account same customer and same products every now and then then this functionality comes very handy then we have got sales order so this is where we can process the orders an order can be easily converted to an invoice at a click of a button and then we have got sales invoice so this is how a sales invoice would look like so we'll get into you know much uh, detailed discussion about the invoice at a later point of time <clears throat> and then we have got credits and then payment on accounts as well <clears throat> if i can go back to sales invoice and open up a sales invoice here we also have got some of the very useful functionalities where you can allocate some open credit notes or advance payments to this particular invoice and also we can create a credit note out of this invoice as well so purchases look similar to sales all functionalities and the look and feel would be the same except that uh, with uh, number wise it works in a reverse direction and we have got a bank bank menu here so this is where we configure all the bank accounts in the book so i'll just me, let me open up one such bank account so this is how a bank account would look like we have got various functionalities in the bank account like reconciliation and then generating a report out of reconciliation then we can import bank statements uh, which are bank feed and then we can see all the transaction done against that bank account and then we have got bank receipt we have got bank payment and we can do bank transfers as well and if it is a foreign currency company if you are dealing with foreign company you can even use the revalue as a functionality and then we have got period end so this is where some of the accounting related admin controls are present uh, period end is an unusual menu and contains anything that is slightly complicated that will typically be managed by the financial controller month and journals the log date currency exchange rates and the chart of account is configured here so this is how this is how the nominal code list would look like uh, this is where we configure the nominal codes or the chart of accounts and this is where we configure the analysis codes we will be talking about in detail about the analysis code now so but this is where we configure the analysis codes so so this is basically a menu where we can have some accounting level controls vat is where we will submit our return financial reports are the formal reports pnl balance sheets age debtors and creditors so these are some of the you know reports that you can fetch from the financial reports menu but the reports and the dashboards are of a much a friendlier version of the same information and we will be looking at those in detail later on in the meantime we need to get back to consulting online and look at their bookings abacus also provides the capability of managing multiple companies in a single salesforce org we can switch between the companies with a tailored user security model and work only on the currently logged in company at a given point of time so this is one such important functionality where if you are managing multiple companies under a single umbrella then it comes this particular functionality comes very handy the challenge with Uh, consulting online is the complexity of their business process a clean booking would generate nine transactions so when i say transaction i mean accounting transaction here so when the same transaction is done in the e-commerce website so it would be a single operation to you let's say you are buying something buying a product online or a service online in this case you are buying a service online it's a, it's basically a therapy session is what you are buying online so in that case it's a single transaction at the e-commerce but when it comes to the accounting we would have to uh, generate the uh, another nine transaction which are correspond which corresponds to the original you know the e-commerce operation and an exception such as a refund would generate a further nine or more transaction to them so how do we manage this in a conventional finance package you would have to na navigate to each of the individual sales and purchase invoices like this and try to figure out those transaction the payment on account the invoices 
the bank payments etc by you know by navigating to each of the tabs separately but fortunately in abacus we have our highly flexible analysis codes which can massively simplify the entire process so basically uh, what analysis code means is it's a way of tagging everything to everything else so that's what we term it as analysis codes so let's look at a clean booking scenario uh, let's say a brn number which is ending with 500 which is depicted in the presentation as the first scenario so this is a global search bar where you can search pretty much anything in the sales force so uh, i'll just take such one such brn number which is 5000 and uh, you know we can enter this straight into the global search bar and then just straight go to this here you can spot all the details about that particular booking on the detail screen we get a quick overview of the consultation who was the client and which practitioner delivered it as well as the dates everything which took uh, took place a little graph over here is very useful which summarizes all the financial elements as well as an activity list where we could record any relevant tasks and emails if we had configured that option we will use this feature on the on the in the next example that we get to a later stage the related tab here lists down all the accounting transactions that have been taken place and these have been sequenced in the normal order but this is entirely configurable this all these page layouts and screens are configurable in abacus starting at the top we have notes and attachments where we this is the notes and attachments where we could upload any correspondence that we might receive when the client makes the booking they have to pay in advance via stripe so we can see we can see first a payment on account transaction here and a bank payment for the stripe transaction fee all transaction names follow a two character coding uh, coding convention to easily recognize the transaction such as si which stands for sales invoice sca which stands for sales payment on account bp which stands for bank payment and so on and so forth so we have got around 21 such accounting transactions all follow a two character code so that users feel happy about you know they'll be much comfortable in recognizing the transactions if you want to look at any such transaction Uh, in detail let me click on this hyperlink this is one such sales invoice which has automatically got generated so this is one such sales invoice this this is how the invoice look like and pretty much any transaction for that matter the sales invoice has three distinct sections here the first section displays the invoice status where it is uh, where it is up to in the payment process how much is paid etc etc and all the ledger entries that has it has generated the invoice header is mostly defaulted in with information from the customer account and finally the body of the invoice includes the individual product lines in this example it has one product line in maybe in some other examples it will have n number of product lines there is no there is no limit on the product lines we can add any number of product lines here each of which generates its own set of ledger entries which we can see if we just click on this hyper uh, hyperlink here which is ledger entries so uh, when we posted this uh, sales invoice these are the two ledger entries which got created so this is what got po posted to the ledger actually so uh, so this is how a ledger entry would look like which will give you a very good understanding of what data is getting posted to the ledger <clears throat> scrolling further through the booking uh, so if i come back to the booking here and see what all the transactions which took place for a for a happy scenario where a customer has done a booking sorry a client has done a booking <coughs> so here uh, we see the money is being uh, you know transferred to the bank account to consulting online's own account and finally we see the practitioner being paid at the end of the month so this is these are the practitioner payment transactions which got generated so what is happening here is basically a single e-commerce operation such as buying a product so in this case we are actually booking uh, you know a therapy session online consultation session which means which we are we are basically buying a service in this case either it is buying a product like like you are buying a shoe you are buying clothes you are buying apparels or you are buying a, a service like this that's a single e-commerce operation uh, what we do is by you know integrating abacus with your e-commerce at the same time in real time the corresponding set of accounting transactions get posted to your ledger so this is the power of abacus financials on the cloud so these are all those set of transaction which got posted for a single e-commerce operation now um 
now let's move on to the second scenario which was uh, now let's move on to the second scenario which was depicted in the presentation where a client does a booking and then cancels it so this is a refund scenario which typically uh, this is a refund scenario which typically happens in any e-commerce portal so i will use another brn number which i had already created uh, in the best interest of time uh, so let me search that uh, so we can use this functionality where Okay, so we can, you know, use this global search functionality and directly get into this. So I'm just going to show the second scenario. Before that, anybody has any questions on the first one? If I can help answering that. You can, I think, post your questions if you would like to. Uh, we'll be very happy to answer that. Okay. Fine. So I'll just take you to the second scenario. So this is basically a refund scenario, which is very common in, in e-commerce portals. So, uh, again, when, when, when the session gets canceled or when somebody initiates a refund in the real time, uh, you know, this scenario would generate the corresponding accounting transactions in, in, in real time, as soon as the cancellation happens in the e-commerce portal. So the technique of generating this accounting transaction is still the same, like what we saw in the first scenario. But since this is a refund, there are a few extra transactions which gets generated and posted into the accounting ledger as part of the booking cancellation. Here, the refund scenario is graphically represented as well for a better visual visualization for the end user. Otherwise, you know, what would happen is that it would be very difficult for the end user to understand the profit and loss, which are getting generated out of these kind of cancellation scenarios. These are very common and frustrating things where somebody, you know, books something, orders something, cancels it. But the company like this has to, you know, always undergo uh, losses because of only due to this logistic and operation things. But this graph, we can clearly observe that the Stripe charges were written off, which is shown in negative. So basically there is no profit in these kind of cases. So it's money just getting into negative. So these are all our expenses out of, uh, you know, these cancellations. Now I would like to pass it back to PJ to talk about VAT, uh, VAT reports and dashboards. Thanks. PJ, can you please take over from here? Yeah, thank you. Can you uh, see my screen now? Yes, PJ. Excellent. And my phone is now turned off. You'll be relieved to hear. So um, what you've seen there is how um, Hasher has managed to simplify the processing of that complex booking um, by using that analysis code, which is very, very helpful. Um, and obviously, now that, that these transactions have all been processed, now these are going to be uh, uh, turned into um, reports and dashboards and so forth. So let's first of all have a quick look at it in the VAT report. So let's go to the VAT menu. And on the VAT menu, you can create uh, your VAT reports. And let's just choose one that we uh, created earlier. And when it, the VAT return is in draft mode, all the boxes are in grey. As you progress through the process and you finalize it within Abacus, they'll become turquoise. And then if you submit it to HMRC through Abacus, then they'll turn green. Um, Abacus is uh, recognized for MTD uh, by HMRC, so it can be chosen as your compatible software. Um, and most importantly, as we can see later on, we also have um, the VAT codes necessary to deal with French and German type transactions where we're using the local VAT rates rather than UK rates. Um, this VAT report though is very familiar to you. It's got the standard uh, nine boxes which you know and love. And if you wanted to finalize it, you just click here on the finalize button. To, before we do that though, the first thing we would obviously do uh, when we had a draft VAT report is go and check the details. And Abacus has a very straightforward, simple VAT report um, which I like very much um, because you get for each individual transaction, they're grouped by the VAT code. You can see who the account was. You can see what the product was, what the amounts are, and then most helpfully, which boxes they'll then appear in, in the VAT report. So you can see exactly where all the numbers on the VAT report are, 
are made up from. And then at the bottom, if you scroll through all the transactions, so we're going through our purchases, our excluded items, and so forth, we end up at the end with um, all the different transaction types all coded. So these ones here are all, I think these are all X's. I think a lot of these, what are these codes here? Okay, yeah, these are excluded from VAT because they're um, there's no VAT element because they're practitioners' uh, uh, transactions and no correlation to con consultations online. Um, we end up at the end with the the constituent numbers for the VAT report all identified at the bottom here, so it all ties in and very helpfully because we all need it. We all do it. We can export it very simply and easily into Excel, either formatted or as a uh, a table of data if you want to do more searches and lookups and pivot tables and all that other good stuff. Um, but it's a very useful feature to be able to export it out, particularly for larger businesses where you want to um, uh, review this in detail. And there could be many, you know, hundreds and thousands of transactions included in the VAT report. But it's a very simple way of doing it. And if something does catch your eye, you've got the reference here and you could very quickly select that item and I'm just going to do one here. This is a practitioner of the session and I put that in my global search bar the same way that Hasha did. Let's go and have a look at that purchase invoice. Whoops. And for some reason that doesn't want to play today but we should be looking there at the purchase invoice which relates to that uh, that transaction so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Peter, you, can go to, you can go to the same analysis code and open it. Okay. Um, I'll leave that for now because this is an unrehearsed ad lib. Um, but the um, you know the idea is is that you can drill down and look at any of the transactions in detail further. Moving on from the VAT, um, we've also got the other financial reports. So we have the monthly PL, cumulative PL balance sheet, accounts receivable, accounts payable. The monthly PL. Um, shows is, is a is a standard p l report with income cost of sales and the operating expenses to give a net profit and loss uh, this is a highly successful little business by the look of things um, and um, the hyperlinks here allow you to drill down into the underlying uh, transactions which support each of those but Whilst this is useful, and we as accountants will tend to use this for investigating anomalies and unusual items, so if something's a zero or gone up, gone down, we'll check the trends in this report here. But the management team, the dashboards are a much easier way of looking at it. And, and I think, you know, the, there's, there's no question now that, um, you know, people prefer dashboards for looking at data and, the, and for very good reason really it makes the data much much easier to understand so this dashboard is entirely tailorable to the client needs so all these um, graphs and so forth can all be built very quickly very easily and tailored to be exactly what you want for your particular client each dashboard can include 20 different graphs and you can have as many of them as you want so for management information junkies out there there really is no limit to them and building a Salesforce report, um, which is standard and free with the Abacus accounting package, is no harder than building an Excel report. Very, very similar approach to, to building things. So if you understand Excel, you'll have no trouble building these reports. Um, what we built for consultations online is a simple sales, cost of sales, gross profit. Nice, simple uh, book view here. We've done a little tweak to the sales in that we've included the practitioner fees. So whilst on those transactions, consultations online is not technically the, the principle, so the turnover doesn't go through consultations online, for management reporting purposes and looking at the overall business that's being carried out, it's actually useful to include that. And we could exclude it with a filter if we so chose. What furthermore we've done is we've broken down our sales by country, and by the different business types that we referred to. So you remember we've got businesses, charities, insurers, private clients, where we put our focus and universities. And then we've got the, pen, the patient profiles here. 
most of the data in this kind of system will be anonymized so that you don't identify um, specific names or people, but you still might want to know, you know, the patient profile. And we've just chosen these as, a, as an example. We then include salary costs, other overheads, and a net profit graph. And this is very, very easy to spot. And, and it was very notable with one um, large client um, that we uh, introduced Abacus to. And the first time we showed them their management reporting dashboard, they identified a mistake in their accounts, which was two years old, which both they and the auditors had missed. Um, so we were quite proud of it because the graph suddenly spiked. It was dead obvious that there was a mistake and we identified and solved the problem literally within two minutes of seeing their dashboard for the first time. So um, they really, really do work. But coming back to consultations online, um, they've got we, they've set this up with three different filters. And again, these could be anything that you like. We've set them up for consultation online as the countries, the businesses, the patient profiles. In a multi-company environment, you could have a simple consolidation of the whole business, and then you could either drill into individual companies or groups of companies according to how you set up your own filters. So really what you want to do. Now in this scenario, um, we're interested particularly in Germany. Germany's got 14 million pounds worth of sales and we want to see how that's made up and what's going on in Germany. So let's look at the German numbers and all the data is now refreshed. So it's made um, relevant to that 14 million. So the sales figures have changed, the cost of sales and the gross profits have changed. The overheads and other overheads are all carried out in the UK. So there are no overheads in Germany. Slightly uh, exaggerated example perhaps, but um, you just see the net profit for the German scenario, which will be the same as the gross profit with a bit of luck. It's different for some reason. Oh I, yes, it's, it's deducted the, uh, the overall profits from it. So when we look at when we look at the uh, the sales figures here, um, we can see 14 million, and then again we see now that that's broken down differently. And let's say, for example, that we're interested particularly in the university market. So universities here, I think, constitute 3.2 million. So let's drill in not on the whole 14 million. Let's drill in on the 13 million. So let's drill in on the universities. And now we can see the patient profile of the university business. And, you know, you might say, well, actually, this looks like a mistake in your test data because what are all these um, employed and dependent children and pensioners doing charging their um, consultations through the university for? So uh, I suspect there's a data problem there. If you wanted to look into that problem more specifically, under each of these dashboard components, as they're called, you can look at a detailed report which underpins it. So you've there got all the individual data that you can look at further to understand exactly what's gone on in that particular transaction. And these reports and the, the fields that are included in here are entirely customizable. These are largely blank because these have been entered by, as manual journals in some large manual journals that we've imported to uh, create test data. So we, we built some big manual journals with about 250 lines in. Um, which allowed us to import all this test data and build all the dashboards. But you would do it in a, in, in a real life scenario, you'd be looking at the underlying transactions here. So it's extremely helpful. And you might, if you were looking at um, specific like this, you could add in top 10 customers, top 10 suppliers. You could look at who the salespeople are, who are the most effective. All manner of things really limited by your imagination. With the 10 analysis codes on top of 16 inbuilt analysis codes, there really is huge flexibility within Abacus using the standard ledger entries, the standard reports to analyze all of this kind of thing. We are looking at doing some artificial intelligence analysis and that'll be perhaps a, a topic for a future presentation, but just with the standard tools available free of charge with the software, you get great analysis and something we're particularly proud of. So that ends the um, topic on the, the overview of the, of the system. Um, and before we move on to the q and I'd just like to um, uh, pop back to the uh, PowerPoint for a second and uh, kind of recap about Abacus. So 
when we designed Abacus, we've designed it for multiple different business types. So yes, it's suitable for the high volume e-commerce. I think we've demonstrated that it's useful where you've got complex accounting, where you need to link multiple transactions around a single business event and use the analysis code to do it. It does it very elegantly, much more simply. And if you're out growing zero, QuickBooks or Sage, which don't have that kind of sophistication and don't have the sophistication to produce um, reports and dashboards, which are always up to date and always available and can be distributed as widely or narrowly as you require, then again, you know, the uh, Abacus is very suitable. If you're on Salesforce, there's lots of advantages. It's all the information is integrated with all the standard Salesforce and there is no integration. It is Salesforce. But you can also use Abacus as a standalone application. And we have clients doing that. And the e-commerce um, client that we've modeled this scenario and have done it precisely that. They chose Salesforce for the sophistication and maturity of the, the cloud platform that it offers. Um, and obviously to use a um, state-of-the-art accounting package, which delivered these advantages. So lots of different ways in which Abacus might be suitable uh, for your business. And, um, you know, if you want to meet us, if you, if uh, now doesn't, now isn't the right time, um, we're going to be at uh, both the AccountX shows, both in London uh, and in Manchester, my hometown. Um, and we're also going to, um, it's called the Coventry Building Society Arena, but it's uh, all the signposts still port to the RICO. Uh, and we'll be going there in December as well. So we'd uh, love to see you at uh, the stands there. Um, and um, if you want to get in touch, you know, please don't be shy. Um, we'd love to talk to you um, about the products. Um, we support those products with consulting so we can do uh, implementations for you or we can work with other implementation partners to suit you. And we also have a growing overseas development center where for those people who, who want to offshore their uh, support functionality, then uh, India and Bangalore is an excellent place to do it where there's a some fabulously well-educated people. Um, most of my colleagues um, in the team will have master's degrees and put me to shame, truthfully, but uh, there we go. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to um, throw it open now to questions and um, who would anyone like to be brave and uh, kind of ask the first question? Okay, so we, we've had a question about multi-currency, um, about uh, can we report both in local currency and source currency? Asha, would you like to illustrate that, how, how we would handle multi-currency transactions? Uh, uh, yes, sure, PJ. Uh, so uh, basically, Abacus Financial support all kinds of you know, currencies. So we have got two different ways of handling uh, multiple currencies. One is the trading currency itself, where you can use a different foreign currency on your invoices, you know, credit notes, etc. So that's a trading currency. For that, you know, you will already be set with a base currency of, uh, let's assume if you're doing a UK business, then your base currency, most of the time, you know, it would be GBP, but your trading currency or invoicing currency could be something else like USD or Yen or Euro, etc. So that's one part of, you know, handling multiple currencies. And there is another part of multiple currencies where your company itself is set up in a different currency other than GBP. So that would be a base currency of your company. Uh, so Abacus Financial is one, one application which supports the second functionality very well. So uh, when, when we do a company setup for you, uh, at that time, we would be setting up a different base currency for a, for a company. So in this one org, if you are setting up multiple companies uh, under the same umbrella, so uh, one company could be set up use as a GBP as a base currency and another company can be set up as Euro as the base currency. So we handle both type of uh, multi-currency environments here. Uh, I hope that answers that particular question. Yeah, and could, could I just take it a bit further as well um, on the subject of multi? So Abacus um, is truly a multi-company environment. And we're actually talking to one client at the moment. Um, we haven't done it yet, I have hasten to add, but um, about having 3,000 companies within the single instance and up to about 10,000 different bank accounts. Now, that is, 
you know, quite unusual, um, particularly because, you know, as Hacker pointed out, Hacker pointed out, they're likely to have different currencies, different currency exchange rates, and so forth. And the way Abacus can handle that, and the way Abacus can handle that sophistication, is that all the data within Abacus, whilst it's still within one org, as Salesforce call it, um, it's all segregated by company. So each company is its own little little thing. It uh, exists as a separate little entity within there. And you can either decide to um, consolidate or not consolidate it. And again, a, a nice feature about the security model is you can grant access to certain companies, to certain people within your team and not others. So there's great flexibility about that. But so things like multi-company, multi-organizations um, and multi-legislation. If you have different tax legislation for one company than another, again, uh, within reason, um, we, we do VAT related trans um, tax at the moment. We don't do US tax. So just to be clear on that. Um, but if you, if you have a VAT style of um, tax treatment, we can handle that as well. So within those constraints, there is huge flexibility with, within Abacus. So just looking for other questions. Okay. One area um, that um, we perhaps haven't looked at very much is, is bank reconciliations and so forth. Um, the bank reconciliation within Abacus is, is quite a sophisticated bank reconciliation. Um, it allows for uh, transactions to be, um, for payments to be matched to both payments that have been made and to open invoices. And we segregate the two. And we have a nice facility whereby Abacus will actually auto match to any combination of three open invoices for a particular account um, to try and create an auto match. So it searches for matches by adding up individual items. And if you do, um, if you make um, a large number of payments, uh, you pay a large number of invoices, I beg your pardon, with a single invoice. Um, again, so there's one payment of, let's say, £10,000 for uh, a thousand invoices of ten pounds each, Abacus can actually auto match up to a thousand purchase payments in a single hit, which is quite amazing. Truthfully, um, I was staggered. But it will actually do that. We've tested. I think we may even have tested up to two thousand. But so the the bank rec has a, a very powerful um, capability for auto matching. It's very simple to use. Um, works in a similar way to zero. Um, for those of you familiar with that. Um, in the with the auto matching and so forth, um, uh, but it has perhaps a, a slightly more robust business feel to it than a um, a sort of a smaller client interface. So, um, any more questions cropping up? Okay, uh, um, period end. Um, people are asking about the period end menu. Um, about what do you do at the year end? What What is it necessary to do to close the year end? And the simple answer is go and make a cup of tea or get up in the morning or change the calendar or put out the dog. Um, you don't have to do anything at all. Um, at the end of the financial year, um, Abacus just rolls the numbers forward and pushes them into the retained earnings figure. So there is no notion of a um, a year end close. It happens automatically. What we do have, which is very useful, is we have a simple lock date, again, set for individual companies, which allows you to stop um, people entering uh, transactions while you're preparing the management accounts. There is nothing more frustrating, I know from personal experience, trying to do accruals, for example, if people are continuing to enter invoices while you're doing it. So um, the lock date is a very simple uh, date restriction on the data entry fields, which stops the uh, the admin staff entering invoices while you're doing your accruals or prepayments journals. Um, and you can switch that backwards and forwards as many times as you like. So, you know, at the year end, for example, when you've got the accountants in, when they're doing their tax accrual, you lock the accounts till they've finished all their work. Once they finish the work, you switch the date back, make any adjustments, put the tax accruals in, make sure it reconciles with your published accounts and um, 
<laughs> practice we've just done uh, this morning ourselves and then um, submit your accounts to uh, company's house and everything ties in so again uh, a, a nice feature no year end so uh, that's something that uh, we've been very pleased to uh, to work with Um, can I customize the financial report? Um, unfortunately not, no. Um, the financial reports are all locked. Um, but truthfully, in practice, we don't find they use that much. I know you're used to them and your team are used to them, but the dashboards are much more useful. And I think once you wean your management team away from traditional um, reports, hard copy reports, they will find the dashboards are much easier and you'll get a much more creative and constructive dialogue in your meetings when you don't have those annoying conversations where you're reconciling information between one report and another because it's all in um, in abacus and it's all up to date and live you're not referring to a spreadsheet which was built a week ago which has now been adjusted by somebody else and no longer ties in with another figure that's been adjusted by somebody else those are extremely boring conversations and I know the ones that we've all had. So, um, no, you don't have to put up with those, which is a, a welcome blessing in my experience. I'm looking around for anything else. If, if anyone, has anyone got something else? I'm just looking down the Q&A. We've got a little red circle. Approval processes. Yeah, approval processes is a great feature. Um, it's um, something that we can do. Um, it's going to be standard in our next release. There's going to be an approval button available on most transaction types, which allows you to build a customized approval process using standard workflow, which is a magnificent Salesforce feature. Um, I'm not wishing to oversell it. Um, is Abacus suitable for a bureau? Yes, with the multi-company environment, it certainly could be. Um, need to think about volumes in each of them, need to think about security implications, etc. But that's really a business issue, not a technical issue. Um, can we build reports ourselves? Absolutely. And they're really easy to build. So thank you for that question. That's a, that's a very good question. Dimensions and analysis codes, we've got 10 um, that are flexible, but that's on top of 16 that are already built in. In practice, the built in ones actually cover most of your requirements and the real skill is to get the maximum management information with the minimum number of um, analysis codes. Um, what integration options are available? Well truthfully um, what you um, what you want to integrate with. Salesforce is excellent at integrations, there's different ways of doing them. Um, we focused our integrations in the first instance on payments so particularly around things like direct debits uh, and bank interfaces, that's where we're kind of putting our emphasis at the moment. Um, but those will, uh, there will be other integrations during available in due course. Uh, what else have we got here? So there's a, a few questions. Is OCR functionality, functionality available? Not at the moment and it isn't particularly planned. We'd probably use a specialist app for that. Uh, can you batch reports? Yes, you can. Um, and you can schedule them and they can schedule the distribution of them, which works well. Sorry, Hasha. Yeah, PJ. Uh, yeah. So regarding uh, capabilities such as OCR or not, so uh, yeah, you're right. And also we are looking forward to implement at the, uh, you know, some of the cases in the coming days. And also, if you could spot, there is another question uh, which is specifically asked regarding the projects and analysis codes. So uh, yes, and you know, we can extend the project codes uh, and uh, which is which will be used for billing purposes by using analysis code. So yes is the answer. And OCR is also available in the coming days. So we are working on that and App Exchange gives us much more details on how you know this are done. So yeah. Very good. I hope that answers that question as well.
Um, in terms of costs, I mean, the, the user license cost um, obviously will be dependent on volumes. We have a list price of £65 per user per month. Um, and but, um, you know, for large, large clients, you know, we need to arm wrestle. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good value product um, offering, you know, a huge amount of functionality, truthfully. Uh, and it includes the standard Salesforce platform cost as, as part of that package. So you don't have to buy additional Salesforce licenses on top of Abacus. That the cost for Abacus includes the Salesforce licenses for everyone who's, use, who's a signed up license user. So when I say affordable, um, it's it's half the price of a standard Salesforce license. So it is really a very good way of getting on the Salesforce platform. Thanks, PJ. Uh, so thanks. Uh, so the, I think we have answered all the questions. Uh, so uh, that should be good. And there are if a few more questions are remaining, we will be definitely answering that. Uh, over to Annie. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul and Harsha. That was a really great session and, and wonderful that so many questions came in. I'm sure everyone found that very helpful. So thank you very much for answering those. Um, so that just leaves me to say thanks to everyone for joining us. Um, do join us for our session at 4 p.m., which is moving your clients to digital the easy way. Um, and that will be at four o'clock. Um, and do go and meet Abacus at Accountex in May. They'll be at stand 316 and they would love to meet you. Thanks. Bye.